Equilibrium between phases discussed in terms of chemical potential. Consider a system consisting of two phases 1 and 2 maintained at a constant temperature T and pressure P by being in contact with a suitable reservoir. The total Gibbs free energy of the system at the given temperature and pressure is then a function of the number of molecules in phase 1 and number of molecules in phase 2. Using very simple mathematics show that the change in G in the free energy resulting from small changes in N1 and N2 in the number of molecules in the two phases can be written in this form if one uses the convenient abbreviation mu i is del G del N i mu i is called the chemical potential per molecule of the ith phase. Now, if the total Gibbs free energy is a function of the number of molecules in phase 1 and number of molecules in phase 2, then we can write infinitesimal changes in G as the partial derivative of G with respect to N1, Dn1, plus the partial derivative of G with respect to N2, Dn2. So, uh, or we can uh, write this as delta G is equal to del G del N1 delta N1 plus del G del N2 delta N2. So this can be written as delta G is equal to mu1 delta N1 plus mu2 delta N2, where mu i I define as the de partial derivative of the Gibbs free energy with respect to the number of molecules in the ith phase. So let's move on to part B. Uh, since G must be a minimum when the phases are in equilibrium, delta G must then vanish if one molecule of phase 1 is transferred to phase 2. Show that this relation yields the equilibrium condition mu1 equals to mu2. So equilibrium condition is that the chemical potentials should be the same. So this we called chemical potential. And we have the total number of molecules, N1 plus N2. And delta N is 0 because the total number of molecules is a constant. So delta N1 plus delta N2 is 0. Or when you have a molecule changing phase, you have the decrease in the number of molecules equaling to the increase in the number of molecules in the other phase. So for delta G, we can write mu1 delta N1 plus mu2 delta N2 is minus delta N1. So mu1 minus mu2 is equal to delta N1. So delta G has to be equal to 0 because G is a minimum at equilibrium. So this is going to imply mu1 minus mu2 times delta n1 will be 0, so mu1 must be equal to mu2. Let's look at part C. Using the relation show that mu i is equal to gi, the Gibbs free energy per molecule, so that we have the same uh, condition that we have set, the Gibbs free energy per molecule should be the same at equilibrium. So we have uh, the Gibbs free energy given by number of molecules N1 multiplied by Gibbs free energy per molecule in phase 1, number of molecules N2 in phase 2, Gibbs free energy per molecule and, uh, in phase 2. So dG is equal to dN1 G1 plus dN2 G2. So I realize that GI must be equal to mu i, which is the partial derivative of 
the Gibbs free energy with respect to the number of molecules. So the chemical potential is the same thing as Gibbs free energy per molecule. So mu1 equals mu2 at equilibrium is equivalent to equivalently we can say g1 equals g2 at equilibrium so we have reached the conclusion uh, that is suggested in the problem so uh, we're considering a system consisting of two phases that is in contact with a suitable reservoir at constant pressure and temperature and uh, we're looking at the phase equilibrium curve between these two phases uh, the Gibbs free, total Gibbs free energy is a, a function of the number of molecules in phase 1 and number of molecules in phase 2. And uh, we can write this using mathematics as a change in the Gibbs free energy is partial derivative with respect to N1 delta N1 plus partial derivative with respect to N2 delta N2. If I define the partial derivatives as chemical potential mu i, it is mu1 delta N1 plus mu2 delta N2. And G must be a minimum at equilibrium, so delta G has to be zero when a molecule it goes from phase one to phase two. So uh, we must have mu one delta N one plus mu two delta N two equals zero. But since the total number of molecules is a constant, delta N one is equal to minus delta N two. So for delta N2, I substitute minus delta N1, and this has to be zero implies mu1 equals to mu2. And since the total Gibbs free energy is number of molecules times Gibbs free energy per molecule in phase one, plus the number of molecules in phase two times the Gibbs free energy per molecule in phase two, the G is the same thing as mu, which is partial derivative of G with respect to M. So the equilibrium condition G1 equals G2, is equal equivalent to mu1 equals mu2.